grand rising and priming powerful beings shout out to you it's the holistic motivator and today i'm going to be talking about living holistically in 2023 living holistically in 2023 is about a mindset that you're not going to be focused on simply achieving things but you're going to you're going to be focused on being the type of person that's an achiever that's the different mindset one person focuses on what can I achieve, another person says who can I be. The person who says who can I be is always going to achieve more than the person who says who can, what can I achieve. I'm just telling you a secret that's not a secret, but it, it, it takes more work than it, it sounds. So what I mean by that is there's one thing. You can actually go for a life because you want certain things because of status, or you can become in a way where you don't even worry about the status, but automatically you get it, right? You could do stuff because you want people to think about you a certain way, or you could be a type of person that then people automatically thinks you about that way, right? I was making a video yet just now, and I was thinking to myself, like, I'm not actually, all I'm doing right now is recording my lifestyle, and my lifestyle is good enough. And I was like, this is very interesting, because then I discovered that I'm not putting on the camera and I'm not doing something for the show. I'm just showing what my life is. And then my life is actually making that room. So it hit me. I was like, oh, the secret is just living a certain way. And you just share that way. So keep tapping into this episode of Ed Talks Daily as I talk about living a holistic lifestyle in 2023. <laughs> Let's get it. Shout out to everybody who's watching in. Uh, this is Ed Talks Daily, a podcast. And uh, I appreciate y'all for tapping in. Please make sure you share this video to five friends and comment down. Lifestyle in 2023 starts with the mindset, right? The way you set your mind is going to set the direction of your life. A lot of people don't look at their lifestyle. They just look at what they want to do, right? So what I mean by that is they really think about like, yo, I want to make this much money. Like I want to have these much friends or I want to like attract this mate or I want to look like that or I want people to think I'm attractive or I want to have like a fat booty or some abs I want to be, I want to look really big. I want to look like, yo, I got it going on. I, I want to look like the macho man. Or I want to look like the macho woman. All right, a lot of people are, are results-based, okay? And there was a point in my life where I was mostly results-based. And then I started to listening to like, I started to personally develop. And one of the speakers I listened to was Jim Rohn. And he said something that I will never forget. In fact, he literally helped me reprogram my mindset. Right, he was like, in life, it's not what you get, but it's who you become. Like he kept saying that over and over and over. He was like, man, it's not what you get, but it's who you become. I didn't, I didn't really understand what that meant up until like I started to realize what that meant. Like, it's not what you get, it's who you become, and who you become is gonna be the type of person that get what you want. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. It's not what you get. It's who you become. And who you become is automatically going to get what you want. So basically, it's not like you're foregoing what you want so you can become something. It's just that you're becoming something not so you can get what you want. But it's just a, it just becomes like a something that just happens. Be <laughs> so what do I mean by that? If you really want to, like, if you want people to respect you, then you don't focus on, man, I want to get respect from people. So like, you mean like, give me some respect. Like you go, you demand respect from people, right? Some people, they just like, man, damn it, I demand some respect. Or you want to demand some self, some love for somebody. I demand your love or I demand whatever, right? You don't get in life by demand. You get in life by who you are, right? By what your energy attracts. So you don't get in life what you demand, you get in life what you demand of yourself. Let me repeat that again. You don't get in life what you demand from other people, you get from your life what you demand from yourself. And what I mean by that is, when you certain have certain standards and values and principles that you follow, what you depend on yourself, you won't necessarily have demanded from others, it will automatically be a requirement. Right. There are some people who are not going to look at you like that because they don't look at you like that because the way they perceive you is different. 
So when you become a certain type of person, you build a certain sort of like, yo, this is that type of person. I'm not about to do that to that. Like, it's like this, bro. Like, yo, the way that you respect yourself is going to tell people how to respect you. And I'm just going to keep it real with you. Some of you, the reason why people don't respect you is because you haven't respected yourself. First of all, you got yourself in the predicament to be around that. So that's why they're not respecting you. So if you say I demand respect from people, you have to first demand respect from yourself. Right. So it really starts with yourself. So it's not what you get. It's who you become. It's not what you demand from others. It's what you demand from yourself. Right. So at some point in your life, you got to you got to ground your life on standards and values. Right. There was a lot of times where people would bring me opportunities, different ways to make money or whatever. I'm like, bro, this is not in alignment with what I want to do with my life. Like this is not in alignment with my standard or my values. So, yeah, I understand that we could pull the jouet right now, but I'm not on some jouet shit because, like, yo, that's not in alignment with what I want to do in my life. Like, the only game I, I want to play is the game called Life. Like, I don't want to jouet nothing, right? I, I don't want to get, like, no none of that, right? So, so once you create a standard for your life and certain values, you actually automatically take some stuff that's just not on your options anymore. You get what I'm saying? So once you set, when you say, this is what I accept for myself, this is how I view myself, this is what I want from my life, this is the type of person I want to be, right? Some stuff no longer aligns with that type of person. So literally, you want to make it in such a way where stuff don't align with that type of person that you want to be, right? There are certain places you won't walk into because they don't align with the type of person you're trying to be. There are certain things you won't do because they don't align with the type of person you're trying to be. So that, that also relates to how you eat, right? Somebody might say like, man, you, you want to eat that? No, that does not align with the type of person that I am, right? So it's really about not just necessarily on what you, what you per se want. It's literally on what you, what you want that's best for you, right? So a lot of people, they don't go based on what they demand from themselves. They go based on what other people demand from them. So they don't live their lives. They live other people's lives and they call it their life. So they never really live their life. They're living everybody else's life but theirs, right? They're living their programming and they're not living up to their making, right? A lot of people are making a living, but they're not living to their making. Why? Because they're living to an expectation of what other people want them to be. They're living to an expectation of what society want them to be. They're living to an expectation of what school programmed them to be. So they don't actually free themselves from the matrix. They get, they get cultured into the matrix and they get cultured into the culture and they're everything everybody else want them to be. And I'm not, I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to blame you. I'm here to tell you that you can free yourself from the matrix. I'm here to tell you, you don't have to live other people's lives. You don't have to leave other people's mindsets. You don't have to live your programming. You don't have to, you don't have to make a living, but you can live to your making because God put something special inside of you. And the moment you realize that you got something special inside of you, you're going to have standards of value so you can deliver it. Standards of values is based on self-worth. It's not based on judgment, right? I don't have standards of values because I'm judging myself against something that somebody else has said. I'm not judging myself against something somebody else said. I'm, I'm actually, I am looking at me and what I can be. And I say, if I can be that, why not be that? If I can be the best version of myself and I can touch souls, why not do that? If I can make millions of dollars in my lifetime, why not go for that? It may not happen today. It may not happen tomorrow. It may not happen a week from now. It may might take a few years, but by all means, if I can do it, why not chase it? Right. That's what it means. It means that I'm going to put certain standards and values because I recognize my power. So let's, let me tell you, some standards and values is not based on limitations. It's not based on constraint. It's not based on somebody telling you you should do this. It's really based on you seeing which is possible for you. It is possibility that drives you to do better. It's literally understanding, understanding like, bro, I got way more in me than just this. I don't got to do what you told me to do because you told me to do it. I'm going to do what God told me to do because God told me who I really was. You ain't never tell me who I was. Right. You try to make me feel like I'm some sort of worker or, or this is or, you know, me like this. So you want me to be like, you know, me Nah, God told me, look, look, before I was in the womb, that's what the creator said. He said, look, before I was in the womb, I knew you was in the womb. Right. God said before you was in the womb, not only that I knew you was in the womb, but I put a purpose inside of you that only you with your certain life experiences can deliver. Right. So with me knowing that I'm not going to settle 
to what other people tell me is possible for me because I already know what God told me is possible for me. Right. So a lot of reasons why people don't base themselves on their inner values because they don't know what their value. They don't know what their value is. And what I'm letting you know right now is you have to discover what your value is, because the reasons why you get the results you're getting is because you're getting the results you're getting based on some false value. Right. Some girl told you that you you, you this, you that and you believed it. They lied to you. your mama, your sister, your cousin told you, you this, you that. And you started to believe it. Society tried to tell you, you this, you that. You started to believe it. And I'm letting you know right now is you got to stop believing other people's limitations. Now, let me say that again. Somebody hear this message. You have to stop believing other people's limitations. Right. Because people don't put their opportunities upon you and try to help you believe it. They, a lot of people don't try to reveal your greatest version. What they do is they judge when you was in your worst state and people would think they know you because they knew you then. But they never knew you because they, they only knew the version of you that was growing through something. And they, but if they only knew what was on the other side. Right. They only knew the version of you that was growing through a situation and they judge you based on the situation they met you at. But God said, look, I don't judge you based on situations because I knew I was the first. I was the last, and I'm going to be the last. So I'm not going to judge you based on the circumstance because I actually I I go over any circumstance. It don't look. That's why God can see you and he will see like the best version of you. That's why God never uses perfect people. God, God uses people that was imperfect in spite of their imperfections, right? So if, if you let your mama say, man, you ain't going to be nothing, you let your cousin, you ain't going to be nothing. You let, if you let what your fourth grade math teacher told you and you believe it, or you let what those church people told you and you believe it, you ain't never going to do what God told you to do because you, you, you too busy hearing what they telling, what they saying about you, right? You hearing gossiping and God is trying to tell you, oh, this is what's in you. Right. I need you to stop hearing what they're gossiping about and start hearing what, what God told you is in you. Right. And there's something powerful inside of you that can transcend any situation. But the mo the reason why you're not tapping into that is because there's noise in your mind about what other people told you. And the moment you forget what people tell you, what society told you, what your school teacher told you, what some what some man from the store, to forget they. Right. The, the problem is you're focusing so much on they and them that you're not focused on on a spirit that lies within you. How many of y'all, if you hear me comment, I hear you in the chat. You're focusing too much on them and they that you're not focused on what is inside of you. And what I'm here to tell you right now is you got something special. You got something powerful. And like Les Brown says, you got greatness within you. But the issue is you're ignoring your greatness because of what you went through. And sometimes it's not just other people's expectations or other people's beliefs that you're believing, but you're believing your own negative thoughts. Even after you stepped into the trueness of who you really are, your mind will start you will try to pay tricks on you. Your mind will try to pay tricks on you, bruh. And what I mean by that is even when you know who you are, something there's a doubt that's in your heart that says, well, look at what you did. Oh, look at what you didn't do. Or look at what you were. You, oh, yeah, you about to do this. Oh, yeah, you really about to step into your gift. You about to step into your purpose. You about to start that business. Man, look at you, bruh. Like, look where you came from. Like, you, like your, your mind is going to tell you, man, you came from the suburb. You came, you came from the slums. Your mind is going to tell you, like, you was on welfare. Your mind is going to tell you, like, you a baby, like, you a single mother. Your mind is going to tell you all of these BS. And I got to tell you, man, it's not, it's not that this stuff ain't, 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 wasn't a reality. It's just it's not going to be your reality forever. It's not that this stuff wasn't a happening, but that's what it was, a happening. And happenings don't, just, don't happen over and over unless you let it be. Your mind going to tell you, man, you always going to stay in Section 8. Right? You, man, look at you. You always going to be here in, in the hood. But you got to tell yourself that, bro, look, this Section 8 is just a section of my life. And it's not, look, it's not Section it's not section too late. Look, it's not too late for me. Well, it's, I'm in section eight now, but I'm not going to be in section eight forever. At some point in your life, you got to let go of comfort for expansion. Somebody comment this below in the chat. At some point in your life, you got to let go of comfort for expansion. Because what the system likes to do for you is it likes to make you comfortable so you don't tap into what's allowed you to expand. It's, that's a word right there, man. The system knows how to keep you in comfort so you don't expand. And sometimes you you so comfortable that you don't realize that the other side of your discomfort is expansion. Somebody comment that again. Look, 
on the other side of your discomfort is expansion, right? The reason why you're comfortable right now is because you, you like the comfort because it's, it's familiar. And sometimes unfamiliarity is the key to prosperity. You got to literally walk into lands that you, you never stepped into. And you got to you gotta walk through the shadows of the valleys of death. You, you got to face the people that's trying to enslave you. You, you literally have to, you have to go through, you have to go do it through blood. You have to do it through sweat. And you have to do it with tears. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to cry. You're going to suffer. But let me tell you something. The, the, the pain of comfort is worse than the pain of discomfort because you can be comfortable all your life and never be comfortable. But you can just be comfortable for a little period of your life and be comfortable for the rest of your life. I'm telling you something right now that most people are not willing to step into. And the reason why they're not being freed is because they're afraid of discomfort for a moment, for comfort. For, and, and that does not mean you're not going to step into troubles when you get into comfort. You're always going to get to a new level of discomfort. But what I'm letting you know right now, even when you when you ex exceed where you're at right now, you get to the new level, you're going to face a new devil. But at least that means that you got into a higher point to be able to deal with the new devil. It's better that you feel with the de new devil. Right. When you let go of comfort, you actually will expand. But it's, go it's going to be some more stress. It's going to be so it's all. This is what life. And I want to let you know, it's either you choose the stress of poverty or you, or, or you tackle the stress of prosperity, one of them, right? It's either you choose the stress of, and I, I'm letting you know right now, the stress of prosperity is way better than the stress of poverty. Because the stress of po po prosperity is like, man, people may be coming for me while I'm making millions, but I don't got to worry about how I'm going to pay my rent tomorrow. Yo, know, people going to be judging me while I'm impacting millions, but I don't got to worry about, whether my mom's going to get a paycheck in the mail and she's going to be good because she don't have to work and stress her health. Look, I'd rather the, the discomfort of having to fill out like contracts, people ex depending on me, than the comfort of me being like in my in my poverty and then having a call with my mom and be like, man, I got to go to work. Not because I want to go to work, but because you can't really you can't really send a check right now. Right. Which which discomfort do you want the most? You're like literally we're going to go deep. Your mom being in the hospital and you can't take care of it or your mom being in the hospital, you can take care of it. But now you're going to figure out what type of help like or, or you look the discomfort of having to deal with paying Uncle Sam or the discomfort of not being able to pay the hospital because you can't pay for your mom, for your mother. You hear what I'm saying? Do you do you hear what I'm saying? Both of them are stressful, but I prefer the stress of prosperity than the stress of poverty. Somebody commented that before. I prefer the stress. Of, I prefer being at a place where I feel like, man, I may be at risk. I may be at risk because somebody don't like what I'm doing for the people, rather than the stress of I'm at risk because the 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 the, the, next, the the man next to me right in the hood trying to take me out because they jealous of me. Look, I don't want to be. I don't want to be in the hood worried about somebody killing me. Right. Right. When I can be living in a mansion look, and talking about, oh, man, the government. Go, look, if the government gonna come for me, they're going to come for me. But God is with me. So who can stand against me when God I rather that stress than the stress of being in the hood and knowing that at any moment you hear what I'm saying? At any moment, something can pop off. Which one you rather? I'm just being real here. So some of you, you being scared, like, man, I don't know if I step into my purpose, I do what I want to do, and I'm in my gifting, somebody going to come for me. Do you know that in the hood right now, there's somebody plotting against you? Right? I I'm just keeping it real. Do you know right now that somebody might not even be plotting against you, but because you're in the hood, because you're just riding around town, you might just be a victim to something you have nothing to do with. I'd rather the stress of prosperity than the stress of poverty any, any time. And whatever it is that I'm going to have to do to get to prosperity, I'm going to suffer. I would suffer the consequence of going through that, that, that process so I can step into prosperity rather than keep, keep being comfortable in my poverty. And some of you right now, you're actually, you're foregoing, you're foregoing starting getting into your gift or your business because you're afraid that if you work part-time you're not going to be have enough money so you, 
Like, and when you, what you don't realize is some of the money you're actually making right now is they're not going towards your needs. They're actually going towards your vices. So actually what you're afraid of is not your needs being met. You're afraid of your vices not being met. And sometimes you have to actually say, I'm going to take that part time and I'm going to work part time on my job and part time on my business because my business is for, is for my is my for my future and my gifting and my job is for my maintenance. So I'm going to do what I can do for my. So the reason why you got three jobs is not just because those three jobs take care of your obligations or what what keeps you in your house. You actually got three jobs because one of those jobs is actually your budget for your vice. I'm just keeping it real. One of those jobs is literally your budget so you can spend it out on, on trash food. One of, those, one of those jobs is your budget because you, you could buy that weed, you could buy that alcohol, or like, like you literally know that you, you, you're not working three jobs just so you could pay your rent. Some of you know your rent ain't, ain't even that much. You actually working three jobs so you could pay your vices. So God is saying, if you let go of one of the jobs, you let go one of your vices, you can actually take that vice money and, and, and take the advice and put that towards your business. So now you could be building a business. Y'all hear, hear what I'm saying? Is this a word or is this not a word? I'm just letting you know right now is comfort is more of a ease is more of a risk to progress than this ease. But this ease is gonna kick you out of, out of ease. Ease is more of a threat to progress than this ease. That's what, that, that's what um, what's his name? Denzel Washington said. Some of you, the reason why you're not growing is because you're too comfortable. Like you literally just wake up, you go to, you go to work, you come from work, you do what you do, you go to work, you come from work, you do what you do. You go to work. You, like you're not challenging yourself. And I'm asking you right now, like you gotta get, the, you gotta challenge yourself because if you don't challenge yourself, you cannot grow. You don't get to the next level unless there's a next challenge. Every team that is trying to make it to the playoffs or trying to make it to the, like they gotta to go to the next level. They gotta face another challenge. They gotta face a team that they didn't know that they can beat until they beat them. And then that proves that they got a grit. And, and, and So some of you, you afraid of being homeless when homelessness is what you need to keep the fire in which, like somebody said, bruh, what you talking about, man? You telling people to be homeless? Are you telling people to get evicted out here? You telling people to, I'm telling, I'm telling you, if that's what it's going to take for it to reveal the best version of you, that's a small price to pay. Small price. If sleeping on somebody's couch is the price you're going to pay to get better, that's a small price to pay. Small price. I'm like, what? You mean my ego getting hurt is a small price, bro. Small price. Look, your ego going to be hurt forever because you're forever going to be taking care of somebody else's stuff. Unless you say, man, I'm going to go for my stuff no matter what it takes. Look, I'm going to find out what's the worst that can happen. Yo, when you find out what's the worst that can happen, you're no longer scared. I'm just telling y'all something that I went through, bro. I, I was like, I was just like going through my life. And I was like, for all of a sudden, I was like, I'm going to start my business. I'm going to do what I was brought here to do. And I ended up sleeping in my car. Not because I couldn't relinquish my ego and go home at the time. But because at the time I said, this, this is actually building something inside of me. So I said, yeah, I could go to my parents, but I'm going to stay in my car. Because guess what? They didn't really believe in what I was doing anyways. I was like, man, I don't need that energy right now. Because if, really, if I went home at that moment, I probably would have quit my business. So I kept going with my business, and that made something of me. I slept in my car. Roach is literally walking up on me. And like, bro, that is embarrassing, bro. I was looking bummy. But my spirit was going through a process of development. I was stepping into the grit that it took. I was developing the routine that it took. God was talking to me in my dark moment. I was really finding out who I was in my darkest place. Not because I had to be there, but because I chose to be there. And I made a choice to be there because I knew on the other side of it is going to be something bigger than what I looked at my circumstance. And I said, this moment did not come to break me. This moment did not come to keep me back. It came to show me who I really am. This moment came to teach me something. So I faced the pain head on. And the other side of my pain is the person who's talking to you right now. The reason why I do what I do is because in my moments of pain, 
I discovered that what I needed was motivation and God revealed in, in me that one of my giftings was to do what I'm doing now. That's why I'm doing it. If I never went through the process, God would never reveal to me what I had inside of me and I'd never be sharing it with the energy that I have to share it now because I never went through the process. So some of you who are so afraid of the process and you want to go straight to the success and every single time you go through a challenge, you call somebody to bail you out I'm telling you right now, at some point in your life, you have to say, nobody's going to bail me out. I'm going to pay the price for my own bail, right? Ain't nobody going to bail you from the bond of what God is trying to break in your life. So you're like, man, man, somebody going to bail me? No, no. Nah, nah. You need to stop calling your friends every time we go through a challenge. And you need to say, I'm going to grow to overcome this challenge. Because if I always let my friends bail me out of my challenges, they're going to pay for me out of my situations. And I'm not going to gain what I can gain out of the challenge. So, so you got to look at challenges as an opportunity to, to gain rather than a, than a place of losing. Because once you realize that your pain is a place for gain, you realize you're not really losing, you're actually gaining more than you're losing because it's not really losing, it's gaining. But it's a mindset. It's a mindset. It's a, it's a new way of looking at it. When most people run out of the, the challenge, you run towards the challenge because you see on the other side of the challenge is you getting better. When most people run away from the challenge, you run towards the challenge because you're like, bro, if I can beat that demon head on, I'm going to face on the other side of that door. So what you've been knocking and praying to God for is on the other side of the door, but you got to face the challenge. You got to walk into the lion's den with the faith enough to say, I'm not going to be hurt by these lions. So you can. It's a process. You can't get the success without the process. And some of you want straight to the success and you want people to bail you out of situations that's trying to mold you into who you need to be. That's what I mean about taking a holistic approach. Situation is going to mold you to who you need to be, but you got to be in a situation in the moment of it. But there's a duality in that. It does not mean that, bro, stay in the struggle and make the struggle becomes your comfort point. It means grow through the struggle. Struggle. Growing through the pain doesn't mean you stay in the pain forever. I was like looking at a few people that was on the street that's homeless. And I've been seeing them for a couple of years. I was like, bro, that's your challenging moment. But at some point, you got to escape that. At some point, you got to decide that you this moment is not going to... At some point, your test got to be your testimony. You can't be in the test forever. So like, bro, it hurt my heart because they were really too young. I'm like, bro, I know y'all got, got some power in you. I know you got a story. I know God's taking you to something right now. And I, I just feel the calling. Like, I'm going to find them around my neighborhood. I'm going to try to give them a few messages because they need to get out the street by this point. Because I've been seeing them for the last two or three years. I'm like, bro, look, your test got to become your testimony at some point. Which means if sleeping, if sleeping from couch to couch was your process, you can't be in that process forever. Right. It's, it's, if being on the street was a process, at some point you got to graduate from your process to go to the new level. So there's a duality in what I just said. You can't get to the success without the process. But every process, you got to graduate from one part of the process to the next part of the process to get into the success. You can't stay in the same process forever. Because if you're in the same process forever, the same circumstance forever, it means you're actually not growing out of the circumstance. You're actually, you got into another point of comfort. There's a point of discomfort where your normal life is shifted. And then you get from your normal life to a life that you're not accustomed to. But then if that doesn't shift, that's another problem. So if I was still sleeping in my car after like three or four years, it wouldn't have been a process. It would have been a hindrance because I didn't grow from it. Part of my healing was I got the lesson I needed from sleeping in my car. Now I needed a lesson of relinquishing my ego and asking for help. And then now I needed that lesson of asking for help and giving space to cultivate my gift. Now I need the other lesson of saying now that I've gotten what I needed, it's now time for me to venture and get my own. And now that I'm going to get my You get what I'm saying? 
So God will take you through certain moments where part of it is I need to do it by myself. Then he's going to take you to another moment. Part of it is I need to actually ask for help. Then he's going to take it to another moment. And it's part I need you to take responsibility and be an adult in your situation and take care of your life because you can't have your life be taken care of. By... But how do, you, how do you know? How do you know without discernment? How do you know? Without necessarily being in tune, how do you know without growth? It's very impossible for you to know. That's why what holds all of this go together is going to be growth. If you don't grow, you can't listen or hear what the season of your life is telling you that you, you need to learn. If you're not growing, if you're not investing in your mind, if you're not personally developing, if you're not reading the books, if you're not letting the spirit dwell in you, it's hard for you to know what the season is telling you because in that season, you won't see it as a, as a lesson. You're going to see it as a hindrance. And normally, the only way you can actually tap into the lesson of a season is to have the wisdom from that season or to have a wisdom that lets you know you're in the season. You have to know the wisdom of seasons for you to actually know what to gain and extract from the season. A lot of us went through the same season, but we wouldn't have the wisdom to extract the lesson from the season. We went through the same exact season. Some of you, in your season of your isolation, you actually, you, you categorized it as a season of people didn't want you. But the truth is, God will say how much he needs you for his kingdom. So he separated from the people that didn't want you so he can tell you how much he really needed you. But you didn't see it as a season of self-cultivation. You saw it as a season of loneliness, but God was really telling you it was a season of isolation. Some of you in your season of literally learning how to live on the earth, you saw it as a season of lack. Where God was saying, I was actually revealing to you what true life is, but you never saw what true life is because you didn't have the wisdom to see what true life was. And sometimes it isn't until after the fact you could recognize what you went through was actually part of your growth through it wasn't your hurt process it was your growth process and sometimes if you are in the process right now i'm telling you the most important thing you could do for yourself your life your personal development and your is to start to focus on growing learning dwelling in the word reading books listening to sermons listening to motivational speakers like doing whatever you can taking the class like studying nature, whatever you can to grow, that's going to be the most important thing you possibly can do in your moment of hurt. Because when I was homeless, I didn't have a place to stay. I didn't hang out on the corner. I hanged out in Barnes and Nobles. I'm about to share. I'm about to share. Can I, t can I share a test? Comment testimony in the chat if, you, if, I'm okay. if I can share this testimony with you. Work. Just comment testimony. I just want to keep you active. Comment testimony in the chat. Just come and testimony real quick. When I didn't have a place to stay, I didn't go to, I didn't go to where, I went to the library, bruh. Of course, like, I was still going to my go-to, so I was definitely still smoking weed. So I was at the plugs place, too. Let me, let me keep it real. I was at the plugs place, too. But I went to the library. I'm just going to keep it real. I went to the library, bruh. I was at the library at Barnton Nobles. And then, of course, I went to the plug. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it real. Right. Can I keep it 100 or do I need to keep it 50 percent? Right. But 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 I would study in the library for four hours and, and, and I would probably be like in my body for the next. Right. So even though I was not always being in my spirit place, I was still seeking for knowledge and seeking for knowledge got me the information that got me information to becoming who I am now. So. I remember when I would hit my homie, it'd be like, bro, okay, now we're about to do this. We're about to hit a link with a bunch of girls. We're about to go to this Getty. We're about to smoke. We're about to chill, you know, and it was fun. That would take like a good four to six or eight hours of my time. I don't know how long, but I was in college. It was all types of time taken. But when, when I was homeless and I no longer had the townhouse and all of that, bro, they wasn't literally hitting me up like that. In fact, I, I felt like I lost all of my homies. It was very weird. But guess what? Because nobody was hitting me up, I had to hit the library up. Right. And not everybody going to hit the library up, even though I was hit. I was still in my vices, but I was still going there and seeking the advice. So what I'm letting you know, you don't have to be perfect in the process, but you got to also seek for. Right. And the moment of my of my of my little pain, 
I would literally listen to motivational speakers. I became a motivational speaker. I was morally a personal trainer. I became a motivational speaker because I, I wanted to do what Eric Thomas did for me. I literally, something in me, it was a spirit that called in me that said, man, you, you can do that. I didn't know it was my gifting till I knew it was my gifting. Something in me said, bro, you can do that. Right, when I would listen to Les Brown talk about that, man, you, you like, I felt that, bro. I was like, I can do that. I can, I can be that. And I felt it in my soul, and I kept hearing it because it kept me in a place where I didn't want to give up anymore. I wanted to keep going. I wanted to find out what was on the other side. So I said, I can do that. And then I made a decision that if I'm going to do that, I got to be the type of person that do that. When I heard Jim Rohn said, it's not what you do, it's who you become, I said, man, I can do that. I, want, I wanted to do what somebody did for me in my moment of pain. When I was going through the depression moment in my life and I was hearing people talk about meditation, I said, I can, do, I felt it. I was like, I can do that. My, like, not everybody going to get the same thing, but some, those of you who are meant to do it, your spirit going to say, I can, I can do, I can do that. And when you feel that thing, bro, you, the only way you can do it is for you to get better to do it. You can't do it if you don't get better to be able to do it. Because you're like, man, I, you're like, yo, I can do that, but you got to be that so you can do that. Yeah, you can do that, but unless you become that, you're not going to be able to do it. That's what seeking for knowledge is going to be. You're going to find knowledge in the word. You're going to find knowledge in the spirit. You're going to find the knowledge in books. You're going to find the knowledge in classes. You're going to find knowledge in the mastermind program. You're going to find knowledge through your meditations. You're going to find knowledge as you f eat healthy. You're going to find knowledge as you go into the gym. All of these things work together to, for you to get information. And the information does not just come in one fashion. It comes from you walking outside and getting wisdom just by walking and observing life. It comes from observing the trees. It literally comes from observing, like, look, I'm telling you, wisdom does not just come by hearing. Wisdom comes by stillness, and stillness comes by intentionality. And the more you're intentional about your lifestyle, the more you say you're going to live holistically, which means you're going to look at different aspects of yourself. You're not just going to focus on one aspect. The problem with most people is they just like, man, I need to make the bread. And they think the money going to solve their life. Nah, money ain't going to solve your problems, bro. It's going to take way more than money. Prosperity is not money. Prosperity is making yourself in such a way when you're prosperous in all aspects of your life. And one of it, the lowest hanging fruit is the money. That's not like, in fact, it will be better for you to get all the other fruits before you get the money. Because that's how you keep the money. And that's how you don't get lost in the money. In fact, prosperity starts with more of wellness than it starts with financial money. So if you're actually healthier, you can make more money than get making more money trying to be healthier. Because if you don't change what you're indulged in, you can get more money and still indulge in those things with more money. More money, more devils. But if you, if you, if you tame your indulgences... You get more money and you're going to feel more of your passions and your dreams and more of the things of righteousness. So let's not get prosperity reversed. Prosperity is more of a holistic paradigm of life. So living holistically in 2022 is changing your mindset. Changing your mindset is learning. Learning is meditation. Learning is tapping into God. Learning is constantly education learning is showing up to the mastermind learning is listening to the podcast learning is reading the book learning is learning from other people's experiences other people's experiences learning is learning from other people's knowledge other people's knowledge learning is learning from other people's failures other people learning is learning from your own failures learning is learning from your own experiences learning is once you start the process of learning, you're going to begin the process of earning. That's my message, and I'm sticking to it. It's the Holistic Motivator. And shout out to everybody who tapped in for today. If this episode was empowering for you, drop some fire in the chat. I just want to remind everybody that's listening in that you are not stuck to the state that you're in. You're not stuck to the place that you're in. 
You're not stuck to the lack of things you don't have or the things that you wish to have or the things you wish you could have. You literally have an opportunity. You have an opportunity to create the life that you want. And like, yo, it's one part of it, like, man, these are just words. But it's not until you really build this mindset that he's going to build the fire inside of you that's going to allow you to stick through it. The reason why most people don't get on the other side is not because there's no other side. It's because they don't have the stickability. They can't, they're not sticking through it. I'm telling you, when you develop a mindset, you're going to stick through it and you're going to find out on the other side. I didn't know I was going to become who I am now, but I had to stick through it to find out. Somebody says, if you, if you fuck around, you're going to find out. Guess what? If you, if you focus intentionally, you're also going to find out. And you're really going to find out who you really, and you're going to find out that, man, yo, there's way more. There's way more out here. And what I'm letting you know is don't look at circumstance and let that thing put you down. I want you to look at what's inside of you and say, man, I am great. I am more than a conqueror. Yo, I'm powerful beyond measure. There's a, there, there is a poem that says, it is not darkness that frightens us, but it's our light that we're powerful beyond measure, that, that we, we try to dim our light in order to... How many of you are so that? Coach Carter? That's the most powerful poem I ever listened. Look, I want you to let you know that right now your light is more powerful than your darkness. And when the moment you know that, you can push through any dark moment because you're always going to say that, man, you know what? This moment has not came to break me. But to teach me something, to build something inside of me that I didn't know I even had. And out of this moment, I'm going to be more than prosperous. I'm going to conquer this situation. So why are most people like, man, why you ain't quit yet? Well, how can I quit when this is where finding me? I want to see how golden I am. I want to see how powerful I am. This can't break me down, bro. I ain't going to quit. Why would I quit when I know that this is just trying to reveal inside of me what I got? It's a resilience. It's a transcendence, it's a grit, it's a power that people can and they don't have to understand it because it ain't even about them, baby. <laughs> it ain't about them. They don't, they're like, I can't, under, I can't understand why you ain't just quit yet. Of course you can't understand because this ain't your journey. How can you understand? This is mine. And what I'm letting you know right now is once you know this is your journey, you don't let nobody convince you out of your blessing. You don't let nobody convince you out of your gifting. You don't let nobody convince you out of your anointing. You don't let nobody convince you about what God told you to do because you're going to keep doing no matter what they think because it ain't about what they think. It's about what's in you. And when you know it's in you, you know it's in you, baby. And that's my message, and I'm sticking to it. It's the Holistic Motivator, and shout out to everybody. Once again, shout out to everybody. We got the horn in the building. I was on fire today. On fire. So shout out to everybody for tapping into this episode of Ed Talks Daily. Y'all go to my podcast and subscribe, edtalksdaily.com. I shared it. I've been sharing this for six years, right? And I shared it when I wasn't as good, and I kept sharing it. Over, I, shared, I, t- I, I literally spoke about the process the whole time, right? I was, I was picking cherries underneath my cherry tree. Today. I was like, bruh, all I'm doing right now is sharing my life. I'm not, I'm not flaunting. I'm not trying to show people what I'm not. I'm literally just sharing. I'm like, bro, and my life is okay. I was like, man, authenticity is the key to prosperity. I was like, man, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. I'm going to just be authentic. I'm going to just share what's going on. I'm going to just share what I do. I'm going to share my life. I'm like, bro, that's it. That's the secret. So that's what I do in my podcast, Ed Talks Daily. It's a holistic lifestyle podcast. I just share with you some principles I'm learning along my journey. That's why I say this podcast helps us grow in all aspects of your life. Um, So join me on this journey to becoming the best version of ourselves. If you want a podcast that will motivate you and inspire you and help you personally develop holistically, go to holisticedtalksdaily.com and subscribe to the podcast and leave a review when you do listen um, on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And for those of you who want a community to help support you along your process of holistic living, go to holisticlifestyletribe.com once again. Go to HolisticLifestyleTribe.com and join the Holistic Lifestyle Tribe community. Once you go to Holistic Lifestyle Tribe, you'll be able to get access to the Holistic Lifestyle Tribe where you'll be able to tap in with other healers, seekers, and motivators on your way to personally develop. You get access to the daily Rise and Prime meetings. You get access to 
holistic lifestyle literacy. You get access to book club. You get access to the seasonal detox. You get access to healthy eating. You get access to a monthly coaching call with me. So it's just a way to support you along your journey. So go to holisticlifestyletribe.com. And once again, shout out to Brooklyn Baby for always supporting me. Um, make sure you double tap on the screen, um, help support it, and share this live to free friends. But those of you who just now tap in, you can't go back and listen to it on TikTok, but you can go back and watch it on YouTube. So go to my YouTube channel if you want to listen to it or watch it. Right? It won't be there. This episode won't be there right now, but I have a whole bunch of other episodes. Um, this episode will be released later on at 8 p.m. tonight. So if you're if you want to tap in and get all the re- re- replays, um, go to my YouTube channel, The Holistic Motivator. And for those of you watching it on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel by by actually subscribing to my YouTube channel. So just click the subscribe button, like this video, and comment on this video. And those of you listening to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible Podcasts, make sure you you text this to your few friends, let them know about it. And leave a review at talksdaily.com forward slash reviews. Or just scroll down on Apple Podcasts, click five stars, and comment your review. So shout out to everybody. And uh, remember, you have the unlimited power inside of you to achieve whatever it is that you want. And to become the person that you were created to be. But first, you have to believe it in order to achieve it. And until that happens, the world will forever miss all your talents, all your gifts, and all the great things that you have to offer. So remember, let your light shine. Don't hide it. Don't dim it. It's the Holistic Motivator. And I want to wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Have a blessed one. Peace.